part of 288 Spare Parts. Also part of 288 Spare Parts. And this will be the CAD slash 3D printing introduction. So does anybody already know anything about 3D printing or CAD? CAD it before? Alright. That's good? Yeah. So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. So it's a software that you can use to basically make models and then turn them into real life objects. There's 2D CAD for like PCBs and stuff and CSS for laser cutting. There's also 3D CAD to make 3D parts for printing and CNC and stuff. There's many different CAD programs. So on our team, we used Onshape a lot because it's a free program and it's web-based. He, uh, also, Inventor, if you have a license for that in school. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's paid, it's really expensive. But yeah, there's there's many different ones. Many of them are very similar, so if you know one very well, then you can kind of transfer it to another one. It's, eh, yeah. Um, also, if you want to program with, like, code, you can use Open SCAD, which is, you type out all the stuff, and then you hit the run, and then it structs it. But that's, I'm not going to go into that, because it's awful. Um, yeah, so the design process is you um, think of an idea and then you try to try and like draw it out on paper or like make it out of cardboard to see how it'll fit together and then you transfer that into the basic CAD sketch and then you fabricate it and then you iterate on that design until you have the desired design, I guess. Yeah, it's very similar to the standard like engineering design process. But yeah, so. CAD is used for many jobs, so if you learn it during robotics, if you transfer to a job that uses CAD, then you'll be good to go. But aerospace engineering, interior design, video game design, animation, architecture, uh, product design. Yep. So the essentials for Onshape for FTC was uh, it's Julia's feature scripts, which gets you, that's also FRC too, all this is. Um, but Julia's feature scripts, um, Let's you generate things like spur gears, gusset plates, and like hole patterns. And then there's the MK CAD library, which is a big CAD library of a bunch of FEC and FRC um, off the shelf parts that you can just import into your model and use. So last year, we basically three modeled our whole robot before we made too many prototypes. What was the other one on the last slide? MK CAD. So yeah, here's what some of the models look like. This is the, the chassis for a uh, normal competition robot, and you can see what the CAD looked like before we started building it. And, and yeah. So with CAD also, you, you make a part, and then you make a bunch of parts, and then you put them into an assembly, and you constrain them to each other as if you were like passing with bolts. Another way that we used CAD on our team was we didn't do this as much in the past, but last year, over the summer, we had uh, a couple of design challenges. So we would just generate like a random game idea that some of the coaches thought of. And uh, then some of the team members would like create their own solutions to it using CAD and then like make a presentation on it. Uh, yeah, I have a kind of a small, it's not much of a tutorial, but. Um, so I made this little robot guy um, pretty quickly. Uh, so you, you start with a sketch, and then you, like the square, and then you take that sketch and you extrude it in 3D space. Yeah. You extrude it in 3D space like that, and, you, and then you have a cube. And then you can make sketches on top of that, and base things off of it. You can revolve stuff uh, around uh, an axis, which makes kind of a spherical, conical looking thing. And you can make other sketches on surfaces and if you want, and then extrude those. You can also extrude remove if you want, which cuts a hole out of something. And then you can shell stuff out for face saving, or yeah, that's kind of the basics. And, uh, yeah, so generally you start with a sketch, and with the sketch you're making a 2D plane. So you can draw, like, for example, a square, yeah. and you can dimension that square to be whatever you want. And then you can extrude it upwards however much you want, or downwards depending on what you're doing. 
you can basically make any shape that you want, and then these designs can be uh, four inches. I wanted to can be made into certain files, which you can then like three D print. So like this, if you save it as an STL file, you could put it into a slicer uh, of your choice. There's many different slicers. There's Kira. Crucial slicer is good. And then you can take that and you can just 3D print it. So, yeah. Can you show us how to install So you would right click uh, this and then hit, there's a small, but there's a lot export button. And then we could export as whatever you want to name it as, format STL, uh, whatever units you use. I think just the default should scale it right. And you download it and then hit OK and then it should download it. Right there. And then you have an STL, which will look good. So the STL basically takes the um, the file from here and uh, makes it into a code that the 3D printer can use. Or so it makes it into a mesh, which the <laughs> slicer converts into tool pads. Yeah, that's the basics of CAD. Oh, that's cool. So have any of you 3D printed before? So it's additive manufacturing. So usually if you are manufacturing, you take like a piece, like maybe an extrusion or a sheet metal. Yeah, something like that. And then you drill holes or you cut it and remove material. But 3D printing starts from nothing and adds layers of plastic to raise it up. Think about it like cutting out sheets of paper and stacking them on top of each other. That's what it is, pretty much. It's a plastic. I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of different kinds of 3D printers, but the main two are SLA and FFF. FFF takes um, plastic filament and then melts it down and then extrudes it out of a little hole and draws lines as if it were drawing like a picture. And then you can cut the, like, if, if you draw stuff on paper and then cut it out and stack it on top of each other, you get you, you can get the same effect, but not out of it you know, it's out of paper. So, but it does it with plastic, and then SLA is, or, or MSLA, um, is uh, UV cured resin, which it shines a laser um, or a UV screen, and then it builds up layers like that. So it's a similar process. So on our some of our robots, we use a lot of 3D printing. So for this one, if you can see it, the gripper Everything that's orange on the gripper is 3D printed. So a lot of this was good because we could make small changes and then test them out very quickly after we 3D print them. Um, and we could iterate over time. And then we also have these right here, which were, so this was all plastic 3D printed on those printers. And then this was with the resin. It was yeah. for aesthetics, you know. For flat things, generally it's better for the, 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 the laser cut stuff, but uh, it's quicker. But also, three printing is a good set for flat stuff. And if you want to add uh, surface extra surfaces to your uh, to those flat uh, surfaces, like on our intake, you see here, there's some spacers that we three print instead of using. Right, they're not exactly um, completely flat. So. Just a, like a general question for your guys' team. How often do you like meet and be in the space and be working on stuff? Are we here? During like the, when it gets busy, busy, uh, we meet six times a week. Yeah. So after school on Saturdays from eight to three, yeah. four. Yeah. There's also flexible printing. So a lot of this stuff is rigid depending on the thickness. I mean, if you make it really small, it can be kind of bendy. So but it's you can also use, you can also, uh, use flexible printing. So these were printed with TPU, which is a flexible plastic. So these are very, very flexible, bendy. If you need some, if, if you need some to be uh, flexible and tacky, you can coat it with silicone. And then yeah, with silicone. that's what we did here. And then it, it makes it pretty tacky. And then we also, on our FRC robot, which is over there if you want to look at it, from last year, we. Uh, 3D printed all of these wheels here to be compliant with the 
flexible printing. And so we have two printers right there that we use often. We had another one over there, but it's fine. Yeah. And then we have the one resin printer over there. Yeah. Yep. And oh, it's a whole workstation. Resin printing, I will warn you, is very messy. The resin's toxic, so you need to use gloves, and then you wash each part with alcohol after you do it, and then you gotta cure it for, either in the, in the sun works too, but we have a curing station, which does it in about an hour. So, so if you have something that you don't want to make, chances are if you've thought of it, somebody else has thought of it before too. Unless it's like a But uh, so all of the parts that are like online that you can buy, many of them, the manufacturers like put out their CAD for it. So like we were showing before with the, the Onshape tutorial, you can import parts. So like some of these tiny things like lock collars here that you might not want to CAD yourself because you don't need to. Or there's wheels on the side. Yeah. Or the mechanism wheels, those are, yeah. They're pretty much, if you can buy it, it's probably, like if you can buy it from a manufacturer, it'll be on the website, the CAD will be somewhere. Yeah, but also if you just have something like maybe not robotics related, there's these websites called Thingiverse and Printables, which have like basically big libraries of CAD files that you can download for free. I think Crucio also has a CAD library. It has, there's also one called Things. Yeah. But yeah, there, there's a lot of them. You can just look them up. So uh, there, there's a lot of free printers in the market, so it's kind of hard to determine which one you should probably get. If you want a good budget printer, the Ender 3 is great. We have one over there. That's what we have there. Is it, yeah, we got it for 100 bucks on sale. That's the one that we use probably most. Yeah, it's really reliable, honestly, once you get it working. Mm -hmm. But if you want something that'll just work when you need it, um, the Prusa Packing Mercury S is great. It's about $800, <laughs> so it's a bit more expensive, a lot more expensive. But it's really great for the price, and it's, it's, it, it just works. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Have anything? Yes. I see a picture of the last slide. Yeah, go ahead. With the Ender 3, you can also, well, for both of these, printers, there's, there's so many mods out there. So many uh, modifications of creates, things that make you print that will make it print better, and there's also a lot of support communities out there. Uh, uh, you can look on Reddit, you can look on each, each of those uh, companies, Ender, uh, not Ender, Creality and Prusa have their own uh, support system as well. Uh, but look on the forums, look online, and you can find out ways to get better at reading printing. Yeah, like um, this th this one isn't modded very much, but I have one at home that's heavily modded, and um, we 3D printed. You, you can get like a direct drive system for this. You can get like a screen cover if you want. But there's also a lot of functional things like you can make new fan ducts too. It's, 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 there's, there's a lot of stuff you can do. We also use 3D printing a lot for making our team shipping element from last year's game. So we have like probably 20 different prototypes of that over time. Um, like we started with a just a cube, because we figured, or actually we started with a cone, but we realized that our intake couldn't really pick that up very well. And so we figured we could design one that was like a cube, which was like the game elements. And uh, if it was gonna go on top, we had like a cone to go on top, but that would get knocked over during the game sometimes. So we wanted to try to make one that was self-writing. So first we made one that used a bearing to spin around, which is, this one. So if it was knocked over, we could pick it up and it would turn right, like no matter what. But the problem with this is when it's when the arm is swinging around in the end game, you don't have a lot of time. It's kind of spinning a lot, so it's not very stable. So this, yeah, this so, is the like one of the first ones with the cube. This one, but yeah, this this was like a block tied to a phone. <clears throat> and then eventually we came up with these self-writing ones, which basically any orientation you put it in, it has weight on one side, so if it gets knocked over, it'll just 
go towards one side, and we'll be able to pick it out in any way. We had a problem with this because it was too heavy, mm -hmm. and we couldn't take out enough supports without it losing structural stability. So we eventually made it out of foam, which looks much worse, but it's much, much better. Yeah. We, we also magnets for double capping. We yeah. Just stick them together if we want. Yep. And that helped us this win the same engine. Yeah. This, this, this writes much quicker. I can pass this around if anybody wants. Is that an interest? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so for last year, when you were like making the design, how long did it take you to go from um, months? We no, we got um, we got the challenge and we started designing it to we have um, a design that would work once built. How long did it take you to make that design? And so after the game is released, we normally start with just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. So we had like probably two weeks or like one and a half weeks of just brainstorming where we all would sit down and generate ideas and like talk about the game and strategies and whatnot. But then and then we met like twice a week. Yeah. And then and once it gets into full swing we meet every week or yeah. daily almost. Mm -hmm. And once we had some of those ideas generated, we would use decision matrices. So like we would give different aspects of the design weight, like like not physical yeah, weight, like, but yeah. we would Points say weight. it's better if it's faster to make, or it's better if it's lighter. Yeah, lighter, or like faster moving around or something. And then we and you rated them in each category. Yeah. And then add them all up. And then the one with the most weighted score was the ideal design. Yeah. Not ideal, but the best in theory. So we had a couple at the end, and we started 3D, or, uh, not 3D, prototyping another design besides this. And we went through a couple iterations. We but, started with cardboard. Yeah. That was fun. And then we figured out that that wasn't really working very well, so we started prototyping with this. And eventually we got to this design, but that took many, many months. Yeah. But honestly, we get working designs um, pretty, like, fairly quickly, but uh, we iterate almost constantly on those designs to make them look better. I have a question. Uh, connecting to the uh, amount of iterations, how, do you remember how many times you changed the intake? Oh, God. <clears throat> and then also, how long from the start of, not, how, how long were we working on the intake from start to finish? So that it took probably about a month, I think, to get from um, what, what we started with to what was remotely that design. So here is one of the first uh, iterations of this part, like the wing. We started with plywood because we could laser cut it and it was very easy to do like quickly and make iterations on. And then we pre-printed it because we could add spacers and then holes. Yeah, our servos aren't, aren't even mounted with screws. They're just held in with like pressure fit. That seemed to work pretty well. It's just sandwiched between the two plates. But yeah, we, we tried wood, we tried Lexan, and then eventually we found that 3D printing was the best for what we were trying to do. Any other questions? Yes, oh, uh, what is your budget for one year? That's not a good question. I think that would be gone over in the, uh, the uh, panel that they're having, I think, upstairs. But I can give you a ballpark estimate for FTC. Not more than like three or four thousand. That's specifically robot. Um, and FRC is much more. It's specifically robot and then all the parts and things that go into this. So like for tools and things, we usually try to budget in tools to uh, our, we have a what we call education sponsor, uh, education mentors, and those are those are uh, mentors that are specifically teachers in our school. And because of that, and because of what they do in our school, we also are able to. Uh, they're also able to budget our um, tools and things towards their classroom. Um, so all these tools were sponsored technically by their classroom budget through the district. 
Also, if you guys end up using any CAD or you want to do any 3D printing, but you don't have like the materials to do it, you should come to our workshop because we have many tools. We have a laser cutter, we have drill presses, band saws, 3D printers. We have a CNC mill now, I think. Yeah. The CNC router cable. Yeah, which we just got last year. Yeah, that was fun. But yeah, so if you ever need any help, you can feel free to ask us. Yeah. And then I guess to go back to your budget question, 